Hello everyone. Welcome to the course WebSocket. Instead of just knowing what a WebSocket is, I would like to explain you what kind of real-time use cases that we can implement with WebSockets. That will give more understanding. That will give more clarity where exactly we should use WebSockets. So let's discuss some use case one: action systems. Many of the action systems uses WebSockets to implement different kinds of requirements. Maybe I will show you one of the requirement that most of the action systems where exactly they use the WebSocket. If I take Binance and Vajrax, these are the crypto action systems. These action systems use WebSockets for displaying the price details on the user's dashboard. These price details appears on the user's dashboard so that users will come to know what what are the what are the prices of uh, different coins at one glance. Now you might ask me why exactly a WebSocket for displaying these price details? The problem here is these price details keep changing, keep changing every time based on the current running market. The prices may go up, the prices may go down. Whenever there is a change, that latest price should be appeared on the user's dashboard. Now, one of the way to do is assume when there is no WebSocket, when there is no WebSocket concept, then how exactly we can do? One of the way might be. From the front end, we will make a call to the server and we will fetch the latest prices. And on the user's dashboard, we will update the latest prices. In the same way, again, after some interval of time, we'll make a call to the server and again, we will get a latest prices. And again, so again and again, every frequent interval of time, we have to make a call to the server from the front end and we have to update the latest prices on the user's dashboard. Do you think that this is a good idea? Definitely not. WebSocket eliminates this number of calls to the server. By eliminating the number of calls, you will reduce a lot of traffic. Right? You no need to call the server every time for getting the latest prices. But how exactly it does, definitely I will show you in the coming slides. For now, I will show you a real-time exchange system where exactly and how they are using your WebSockets. Let's see. So to show you a real-time example, I'm going to watch it. So Vajrax is a crypto exchange system where you can buy or sell the coins. And I'm showing this site to show you how exactly they are using the WebSockets. Okay. I'm not promoting this site or I'm not promoting you to buy crypto coins from this site. And on the left side here, you can see there are crypto coins available and along with them, there are prices also displaying. And you can see here, there is some market depth, I mean some history of the market. The real time um, uh, buy sell uh, units they are displaying over here, and this is also keeps getting changed every time you can observe clearly here. So, how they are doing this thing behind the scenes, they can use web circuits here. So, if I go to the network tab, okay, uh, let me reload this site to reload the network functions here. Yeah, so if I go to stream, so stream in the sense you know, stream of data, so that just they might name. Uh, for that region, but the type here is WebSocket. You can see WebSocket. This is the WebSocket. Okay, and you can see the response code is 101. Just remember this. We will talk about this later. Okay, if I go to the header sections, you can see the request URL is nothing but WebSocket protocol. Okay, and if I go into the messages, this is the response that is coming from the server, and you can see they are getting some feed of data. Okay. They are getting some stream of data every frequent interval of time from the server. So this is the use of WebSockets. So because of this, they will keep getting the data from the server and they can update the data in the front end. Another good example that we can discuss on WebSockets are chatting applications. When you implement chatting applications, we mostly use WebSockets to make a persistent connection between the client and the server because clients can send multiple messages to the server and also users will interact with another user right user will ent interact with another user by sending the message for each and every message we cannot make a new connection to the server in the same connection or on the same terminal we should send multiple messages for that reason we will use WebSocket. not only for that there is another reason if you see suppose this is a group call 
there are several users participated in this group. And if one person sends a message, that message should be reached to the other users who are participated in the room. Suppose if user A sent a message, then server should distribute that message to the other users who are participated in that group. If you observe here, this is mostly like a push based model. Instead of you just asking server about the arrival of new messages, here server is pushing the messages as soon as it receives from the users, right? It's completely a push based model. So with WebSockets, we can develop persistent and also push based models. And I'm going to show you and I'm going to implement the same use case in the coding and you will come to know more details uh, on the implementers part at the time. But for now, I think WebSocket is also an ideal solution for the chatting application. And I would like to mention one more point here. WebSockets are not only the option for implementing the chatting applications actually. So we can implement chatting applications with uh, another protocols as well. But WebSocket also one of the options that we can think of. So like said, you can use WebSockets where you want long live connections or frequent data updates from the server. Now, let's see how it is different than HTTP. HTTP and WebSocket, both are communication protocols and both works on top of application layer. But what is the difference? The main difference lies how the handshake is maintained. For HTTP, a user sends a request server definitely will process something and it will give some information to the client. Once this response has successfully arrived to the client, then the handshake will be terminated. There won't be any further connection, hence a client cannot send another information on the same channel. If client wants to communicate with the server again, then it should be a new request again and there should be a new handshake, there should be a new connection. That's what uh, that's how it works in the HTTP. But coming to the WebSocket, this handshake is completely different. How it maintains the connection? Let's see. In WebSockets, a client will connect to the WebSocket server to form a handshake. Once a server is responded with 101 success message, a successful handshake established between client and the server. Now from this moment onwards, a client can send n number of messages to the server in the same way a server can push n number of messages to the client. There won't be any limit here. A client and the server can exchange any number of messages over here in the same connection. But in HTTP, if a client wants to send another request, there should be a new connection. But here in the same connection a number of messages can be exchanged between them. Now if a client requests for disconnection then only a connection will be terminated. Means suppose if you are in the browser if you close the browser then a connection will be terminated or you can close you can request the server for the disconnection. This is the main difference between a web socket and the HTTP. I would like to discuss Few more points here on the WebSocket connection on the same representation. As I said, there will be a successful handshake happen between the client and the server to exchange the messages, correct? Now this handshake or this connection will be maintained for a long time until there is a disconnection happen from the client or there is a close happen from the server. Means until there is a disconnection, this connection will be live for a long time. Now that is the reason I will call this connection as a persistent connection. Okay. And as I said, a client can send n number of messages to the server in the same channel. In the same way, a server can push n number of message messages to the client in the same channel. Means both client and server can exchange the messages in the same channel. That is the reason I will call this as bidirectional. Now the other thing here is a client can send the message to the server in the same time at the same time a server also can push messages to the client means there won't be any synchronization over here there won't be any order like once a server push the notification then only client can send there is no such limit like that for the same connection or over the same channel a client and the server can exchange the messages parallelly that is the reason 
I will call this as full duplex. So now if I ask you what is the WebSocket meaning, then a WebSocket is nothing but a communication protocol which provides a persistent bidirectional full duplex communication channel. So whatever the discussion that we had on the WebSocket, I believe this information is enough to get into the coding. So I will show you uh, how to create a WebSocket uh, with Spring Boot, basically the configurations and the uh, endpoint creations, everything uh, what we can do with Spring Boot, I will show you here and also connecting the WebSocket from the client. Here I will use client as a JavaScript, maybe from the browser I will show you uh, the way to connect to the WebSockets here um, and then uh, I will show you how to push the messages from the server, we will code this and also once server is published the messages, uh, what is the way to receive the messages and doing something on top of the messages from the UA side, I will show you that one and then sending some messages to the server, ideally I will show you the bidirectional part uh, by uh, sending messages from the server as well as sending messages to the server. So by doing this, you will come to know the bidirectional part and then I will show you the listeners. Uh, yes, when you connect to the WebSocket or when you subscribe for some uh, WebSocket, ideally there are some listeners uh, which can help us in certain cases. I will show you what kind of listeners are available. And also finally, we will build a simple charting application with WebSockets. 